here's, Shel here's Shelly Hamlin. Here's Shelly Hamlin at 17 out of the high rough. She must be sure to accelerate the club through the ball. She wants to be sure to get this ball on the green. Good touch. About bites a little too quickly for her. Back on the tee to Pam Higgins. She looks like she made... Uh, did she pull that ball to the left? Yes, she did. In the left rough. Pam Higgins in the left rough there off 17. Mom moments ago, Susie Burning hit this shot off for 17th tee. Susie rates this the hardest driving hole on the golf course. Between the traps in the center, it's only 28 yards between the, both traps in the center of the fairway there. And now to Chris at 18. Here is Shelly Hamlin's putt for a par, about 12 footer. She strokes it firmly and plop right in the middle of the hole to keep her at uh, second place. And here's uh, poor Sharon Miller's having her trouble today. She's uh, had such a good tournament until today. I think she's putting this for a, a six. She had some trouble over by the tree and then put it in the sand trap and then across the green to the other sand trap. She has a very crucial putt here, about an eight footer. Sharon is trying to uh, forget about a lot of things in her swing, not to be so mechanically conscious and just work on getting the ball in the hole, working with what she has. She's one of our strongest hitters of the ball, which has been going through a little slump of late and has been working very hard on her game. This is for a six. Oh, it swings off to the right and she'll settle for a triple bogey seven. I know how she feels. I've had many of those, I'll tell you. <laughs> they really make the score go up. You know, these greens at the Open are always very slick, and it's the girls who can putt the ball that usually win, win the Open tournaments. And now we go to the uh, 17th fairway for Pam Higgins' shot. Uh, Pam is one of the most dedicated players we have on the tour. She loves to practice, and uh, it's a great future for this young lady. Like she's got probably a four, four wood here, around a 200 and let's say 10 yard shot into here. She took a pretty good swing at that ball. Just in front of the green on the left. And now we go to Susie Burning. She told me yesterday that, that uh, she really thinks a lot harder whenever she's playing in the USGA National Open. She thinks hard on every shot, every swing, and she loves the well-groomed courses that the USGA affords for us. She's inspired by, I guess, all the greenery and uh, just everything that makes the US Open so wonderful. It's a great competitor. Looks like she's uh, using an iron here, probably a, a four iron. Real smooth swing here. Hits short of the green, bounces up, rolling past the pin. I, oh, just off the green, but uh, just about a, about a 30 footer. Certainly a beautiful day out here at the great uh, country club at Rochester. And don't go away, we'll be right back. Times do so change. So here we are for the 21st United States Women's Open, the final round, and we're at the 18th fairway. Shelley Hamlin playing out of Fresno, California. Shelley, who is seven over, sharing second place with Gloria Errett. Gloria has finished 72 holes, while Sue Burning leads at two over par. Here she is, Shelley Hamlin. About a seven there, and I imagine Chris, because she's hit a big drive, and the wind's with her now. She's about 150 yards, maybe a six iron. Pulled it a little bit, but it's going to be all right, I think. It is on the front left side of the green. She wasn't happy with that shot. It wasn't really a good shot for her. And uh, we'll get Sharon Miller's shot. She's from Battle Creek, Michigan. 13 over. It's a long drive. And that's why she's over. She didn't stay down that ball quiet enough, and she's going over and to the right of the green slightly. Now back to uh, 
missed consecutive 21st United States Women <laughs> Open. Marilyn Smith. Thank you, Chris. Here's young Pam Higgins preparing to cut for a par four, about a five footer. Made a beautiful chip shot, about 40 yards. Oh, and rolled it right in. You know, she's one of our best putters. She's a, a great streak putter and uh, just a good solid golf swing all the way through. Now here's Susie Burning. She chipped up, um, here's that chip, folks. About a seven iron off the edge and rolls it right up about a foot short of the pin. Very fine touch. Here's her sideways stance here. Very steady over the ball. Straight back and straight through. And she makes it. So a nice four. And folks, we'll be right back with Susie Burning leading by five shots over Shelly Hamlin and Gloria Errett. Hitting her tee shot at 18 on the 72nd hole, the leader at two over, leading by five, Sue Burning. Good, comfortable lead, I would say, Chris, and she's swung that club very, very fine, as she's done all the way through the tournament. It's right in the center of the fairway in a long way. And on her way to a back-to-back -back championship. Her third, as we look at Pam Higgins. Pam is eight over. Started out tied for the lead with Sue Burning at two over. In the left rough, as you see here in the 18th hole, and a very important putt for Shelley Hamlin. She could break a tie for second if she can put this in. Gloria Area is in at seven over, and that's where Shelley stands. So she'll have this, uh, oh, about a two-foot putt to save her par four at the 72nd hole. And there will be a tie for second. Unless Pam Higgins should hold her uh, fairway shot here on 18. And we'll uh, be seeing Pam Higgins' shot a little bit later on, of course, as she's in a twosome with uh, Sue Burning, the leader, Sharon Miller, and Shelley Hamlin. Uh, next to the last twosome, and uh, here you see Sharon Miller of Battle Creek, who is eight over. Chris, she has a rather delicate little chip, however, she has enough green to work with. Her second, as we stated earlier, well, she's going to use a putter. Correction, Byron, she is 13 over, I'm sorry. And uh, she's through that long grass, I was a little surprised, but she did it very, very well, but it's hard to know just how hard to hit those when you're coming out of the long grass, but she did it quite well. Left herself a delicate little putt of about four feet to try to make, stay at 13. All this at the Country Club of Rochester, founded in 1895. Some people probably wonder the oldest course in America. That's St. Andrews in Yonkers, New York, 1888. Yeah, uh, Sam Marzell that was the pro here. Sam was the national amateur champion one year. That's right, and he ago. played in four Masters and four Opens and three PGAs. And, you know, he's been here 17 years. I didn't think he was that old. I didn't either. I didn't think it doesn't seem that long since he was playing amateur golf even, but he does a good job here. Certainly does. To remain 13 over through 72 holes. Very well done. <laughs> Lovely way to finish. Sharon Miller and now Shelley Hamlin he needs this putt to tie for second with Gloria Errett. Here you see the open purses, the men's totaling 225, the women's 40,000. That is total purse. First prize at Oakmont was 35,000 to Johnny Miller and Sue Burning will win $6,000 today. But the ladies are coming along in great fashion, and they are drawing more folks. Right, this term has been uh, very well run, and there's been a lot of people here. And I think it's the best women's open we've been now for par four. Delicate little putt, it's not a gimme. But... So we have a tie for a second between that young lady, Shelley Hamlin, and Gloria Eric at seven over, while Sue Burning and Pam Higgins yet to play the 72nd hole. They're the final twosome here on a beautiful afternoon at a beautiful club here in Monroe County, which was the home, Byron, of a man named Walter Hagen. Right. 
one of the great heroes of golf. Now, Chris, uh, this young lady, if she could get this down and get up here and get a birdie to tie these other ladies for mm -hmm. a second, could make herself add to her purse considerably, and she's getting the people back a little bit on the left, that she's in the rough, and the trees guard her slightly. You can just barely see her there on the right side of your screen. Really, the trees are not in the way, but just enough to bother you slightly. She's got about a six iron to play to the screen. She's eight over and seven over a second. Ball will come out pretty fast, lying in that rough as it is. Won't have much backspin on it. Ooh, she left it out to the right, I'm afraid, Chris. And she did. She put it in the bunker to the right. Stay away from those trees a little bit too much, I guess, Chris. And they are beautiful trees, and uh, gives us an opportunity to uh, pat the green superintendent who's been here for a long time, Elmer Michael and Bob Fight. And our friend Jerry Zarno is chairman of the Greens Committee. Byron, they've done a job. Now, the leader and the young lady who's going to win her third open soon. Pulled it slightly, but uh, it'll probably stay on the green. And, and it didn't over into the bunker. But with five strokes to spare, that uh, is not very dangerous. No, I don't think so, as we have after 72 holes tied for second, Shelley Hamlin at seven over and Gloria Errett. All right, we'll see the conclusion of this great championship in Rochester, New York, after this message. And moving along that uh, long and beautiful bunker here guarding the 18th green is your leader, Sue Maxwell Burning. She is two over par, leading by five shots, and this is the final hole. Chris, it shows you the attitude of a golfer. Uh, she was walking down the fairway and swearing her left hand and working her left hand. She realized that she didn't hit that ball the way she wanted to, even though she's going to win the tournament. She was still upset about the fact that she pulled that iron to the left of the green. So this shows what perfection these girls try to strive for. Well, she's perfection everywhere. We watched her on the practice tee, and uh, she works at it. She just doesn't hit balls. But meantime, Pam Higgins hitting her third shot on the par 4 18th. Pam is eight over. She's getting down with the shot. Nice flex at the knees, face the club, slight bit open. Shouldn't take the club back real long. You should take it back fairly short and then hit through it. And she did it very, very well. Pam Higgins. These are appreciative golf fans with that same type of appreciative applause, almost like Troon. Right. It's Not as many folks, but... No, you don't see that many folks on the golf course very often. Look at that little honey. Meanwhile, uh, I know Frank Gifford is not uh, missed looking at people like Pam Higgins. Frank, how about a report with your mobile unit? Well, they tell me that Dave Marr started this way. I doubt it. But I'm with a great champion, Billy Jean King, Chris. Five times winner at Wimbledon. A quick comment, uh, Billy, you're just taking up golf. Uh, you going to handle that like you did tennis? I don't think so. I think I have to start a lot younger. Uh, Janie, uh, who's it? Spring Pro Hilton has been giving me some it's lessons. Jenny Blaylock. Uh, Jenny Blaylock, right. We came up here, a few of us from Hilton had to surprise her. But I guess we didn't inspire her enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, she played off a good one over today. And it's great to see you. Good luck. Uh, well, what do we call it? Is Bobby, what, what do you call him, Bobby? I call him Roberta Riggs. <laughs> Roberta Riggs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chris. Okay. And a beautiful third shot, Byron, out of the uh, white sand here at uh, the Country Club of Rochester by our leader. And she'll have a three-foot putt for a par four. Yes, she uh, negotiated the shot very well, Chris. She, uh, as she's done all through this tournament, she's played very steadily. Last year, she shot 299 at uh, the East Course of Wingfoot. Another great championship place. Right. We'll be there for the men's open next year, but the West Course. Right. It is. Both those courses are great. And, of course, next year, the women's open will be played at the LaGrange, Illinois Country Club. First time that the event has been held in the Chicago area. And then the men's open in 75 at Medina. Uh, she needs this to tie. Well, of course, Ann Quas Sanders was an amateur, so she doesn't need it as far as the money's concerned, but for the position of the tournament. And she pulled that, I believe, just a slight bit, or maybe it broke a little more than she expected it to. So that'll put her in fourth, just ahead of Mary Mills and Sandra Palmer and Judy Rankin. 
those last three finishing 72 holes at 10 over. Chris, I would say this, that probably you're going to see a lot of women putting what we call kind of side saddle after the way Sue Burning has played here this week with her toes pointing straight to the hole with an open stance. Very much like Sam uses side saddle, except he spreads his hands. She has her hands right together. The way she's been putting all week, she'll probably roll this, and she does. Ooh. So she had a level car round today of 72. The champion, back-to-back -back victories, going along with her 1968 championship in Reading, Pennsylvania. And look at that. The daughter of the Burnings. Obviously, her most prized possession. Yes, I don't believe she'd give that for the Open Championship. <laughs> Irish, she said, did say she wanted to win it. You know, we'd like to congratulate uh, the chairman of this championship, Chuck Ressler, and the president of a great club, the Country Club of Rochester, Bud Frame. And their co committees, they have done just a super job. As Sue Burning is the winner with Child and Roses. We'll be back in a moment. Performance. There is the scoring tent behind the 18th green and the winner, Sue Burning, along with her playing partner today, Pam Higgins, in there checking the scorecards and signing them. As Sue Burning has won it by five shots over Shelley Hamlin and Gloria Errett. And uh, six over the low amateur Ann Quast Sanders. Earlier today, i uh, show you a beautiful shot and a beautiful girl. This is Laura Baugh, 18 years old, recently turned professional. She finished uh, the championship at 16 over or a total of 304 but she'll better that in years to come i'm sure yes i think laura has a very bright future she has now look what a great extension she has here she has the longest extension of any woman that i've ever seen and we're going to her back swing and see because of her long extension she has a very full follow through she does an excellent job of keeping her head still she has a little a more flex at the knees than most ladies do but uh, she has looks to me as though she has a very excellent future and easy on the eyes. Oh, yes. Let's go down to Frank Gifford. <laughs> well, we have a couple of very happy young ladies hey. here. Sue Burning, who has won her third U.S. Open championship. And this is Robin, two and a half years old, right? Hello, Frank. Yes, that's right. Sue, yes. you are some kind of pressure player. Well, thank you. I was very fortunate to have my timing with me today because I was very nervous to start off with. I really was. Sue, you don't play that often. Uh, well, you, I think you've been out, what, 11, 12 times this year? And yet uh, uh, well, you seem to pull it together for the Open. Well, I really enjoy playing very plush golf courses, and this is one of them, and we don't play that many. And I don't know, they just inspire me, and I just, I think I try a little bit harder and every shot in the open. Now, but what do you think of your mommy? Say hi to Uncle Roger. See? See my grandpa? Well, it was a long 18 holes. So again, a congratulations, as we congratulated you last year at Winkford. Thank just you. sensational. Thank you very much. Chris, three times U.S. Open champion, Sue Burney. All right, having won at Reading, Pennsylvania, and having won, as Frank said, at Wingfoot, where we'll be next year as the USGA will be again presenting and sponsoring the United States Men's Championship and uh, at Wingfoot, and that will be a great event, Byron. It certainly should be because that course has a lot of history behind it and a uh, uh, good challenge. And, of course, in golf uh, here on ABC, it'll be the tremendous PGA at Canterbury in Cleveland, Ohio. August right. uh, nine, 10, 11, and 12 are right. telecasts. And then the men's amateur at a course you're familiar with. Right. I was pro at Inverness, you know, for many years. Inverness and Toledo should be a wonderful golf course for the amateur championship. And this year, it's going to be played at match play. Mm -hmm. And that should be very interesting. And, of course, it'll be difficult for us to televise, but we'll do it some way. Some way is right. And we'll have football this weekend, Byron. I'd like to remind everyone that at 9.30 Eastern time, it'll be the Miami Dolphins taking on the best of the 1972 collegiate crop. And um, this is a year where I'm sure the college players, as coached by John McKay and his Southern California staff, will, will be very representative against the, the champions of the world, the Miami Dolphins. And then on Saturday afternoon from Canton, Ohio, Frank Gifford, Don Meredith, and uh, Howard Cosell will be there to bring the first of many professional games. This is a preseason game in the Hall of Fame event in Canton. So... All in all, a uh, very, very busy summer here on ABC, and we hope that it adds to your uh, weekend.